Hey guys, Jay Young here with Young Red Angus. Thank you so much for making this video a part of your day. Uh, today's video is something I've been wanting to cover for a while now. I sent off four compost samples to Zach Wright. So for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Zach owns Living Soil Compost Lab. And I sent off four samples for him to him, for him to analyze. So Zach is the person that I contacted back in 2020 to get advice on how to fix my my Johnson Sioux compost when it had gone anaerobic. Uh, he gave me great advice, uh, it worked out, and that's the compost that we use to make uh, 200 bushel, raised 200 bushel corn without applying nitrogen or phos. So I, I have a great deal of gratitude towards Zach. I was really excited to send him off the compost samples this year to get his analysis on how, how they turned out. Um, and so in this video, we're gonna cover those four uh, compost, what were in them, and what Zach was able to um, break down um, as far as the fungus to bacteria ratio and how the compost samples looked. So I'll share those videos with you and we'll kind of go over what those results mean uh, for us. And it's something that I want you guys to think about. Um, if you're, the, re the whole reason I'm doing this video is because I want people that just created Johnson Sioux compost for the first time, or even if you've been doing it, I really encourage you to send samples off to a professional lab or to take a microscopy um, course to learn how to, you know, look at your compost under a microscope to make sure that you're making good compost um, so that you know what is actually going out into your field. So um, we're going to go ahead and show you what Zach's breakdown was, and then I'm going to kind of talk to you about what my thoughts were on those results. Today's episode is sponsored by SoilWorks. Go to SoilWorksLLC.com and check out their awesome products like GSR Calcium and Bio5. That's SoilWorksLLC.com. Okay, Jay, sample one here. So far, I really like what I'm seeing. I see a lot of active fungal hypha at the lowest magnification, which is 40 total magnification. During my initial scan, I was able to identify a nematode, very active. I'm going to have to come back to it to identify it. Oftentimes, we have to heat up the sample with a lighter in order to uh, slow it down. But I will do that at the end of this sample, as if I do that at the beginning of the sample, I could dry out the whole sample, and then it just leads to issues with counting. So I'm going to begin now with the formal assessment where I will be doing 20 fields of view and we'll see what's there. But already in this um, field right here we see a test date amoeba in the middle. We see several strands of clear fungal hypha. We see fungal spores. We see conidiospores. We see bacteria and we see some mineral and a little bit of organic matter. Um, so this is sample one. Hey Jay, sample two here, um, Johnson Sioux Bioreactor. The most noteworthy thing of this sample is its maturity, especially as compared to sample one. We see a large number of fungal spores in this sample. Here we are at 100 times the naked eye, 100 total magnification. And the black dots that you see are our fungal spores for the most part. Um, we had a high amount of testate amoeba in this sample as well. Zero flagellates, zero ciliates, zero nematodes. We have a, what Dr. Johnson would call a mature compost bioreactor. And that this is predominantly fungal spores, which is what we're after for the kingdom of fungi in our growing systems. Hey Jay, this is sample 3, Bioreactor 3. This is a definitely a bacterially dominant compost. I wanted to highlight this particular field of view at 100 magnification where we see a large fungal hyphal thread running through the center of the screen here, this brown thread. Um, there was more fungal activity in terms of hypha in this sample than in sample 2. Um, not as much as in sample one. Um, this field of view also highlights the active nematode at the top, which has been identified as a bacterial feeder. 
it seems to be attaching itself to a large hunk of organic matter, which I would liken to humus based on the quality of it. Um, humus is a very broad term for that. Um, this has predominant uh, testate amoeba as the protozoa. I found one flagellate um, in the formal assessment. Flagellates were low. Fungal was good. There was fungal spores. You can see a few of the dark uh, circles in this field of view here. Again, we're at 100 magnification. Um, good stuff. Hey Jay, we're looking at sample four here. Uh, one of the most noteworthy things that I find in this sample is all of the different kinds of amoeba that you have. Uh, here we see uh, four different kinds of testate amoeba in this sample. The gold circular one just left of center, the pink pill-shaped one just right of center, and then to the left of the pill-shaped one we have, you can kind of see the two clear testate amoeba. We're at 100 magnification. Also in this field of view, we can see uh, to about four o'clock of center, um, we see some active fungal hypha threads, those brown threads. This sample had almost 2,400 micrograms per gram of fungi, which is very good. Um, this is, I would say, about an equally bacterial to fungal dominant. However, I have yet to count the bacteria yet. Just wanted to highlight this sample four. Sample four is good, good diversity, fungal feeding nematodes. Excellent work. Guys, if you want Zach to give you a breakdown of your compost, go to Living Soil Compost Lab LLC um, and email him and just tell them what you're wanting to do with your compost or what kind of results you want to get back or what you want to kind of do with your soil samples or your compost and he'll get back with you and uh, you can send off your compost uh, to Zach to, for him to do an analysis. Um, he's not a paid sponsor of the show. I really appreciate him doing this and I appreciate the service he's offering to people and so I wanted to make sure you guys were aware of how you guys can also um, utilize his services. Okay guys, that kind of gives you an idea of how the compost turned out for us. Um, I had nine total bioreactors. Um, I picked the four of them that I wanted to get an idea of how they turned out. Um, a lot of the wheat straw ones didn't turn out well. Um, actually turned it, or I did, let's see here, five wheat straw ones, and I ended up using compost out of two of them um one of them and then i've got another one that it we made it in july so i'm going to use it on wheat but anyway the first one was straight corn stalks the next one was the next two were 60 percent corn stalks uh 20 percent grass clippings 10 percent uh, horse manure and 10 percent wood chips the last one was 60 percent weed straw 20 percent grass clippings 10 percent wood chips and 10% horse manure. So the thing I wanna bring up on this is, you know, the one was bacteria dominant. Um, and that's kind of what throws me off a little bit because one, two, and three were fairly different on how the samples came out, um, but they were all done the same. So I don't know if it's a function of where it's coming at in the bioreactor or um, you know what the situation is there but my point in making this video is is that you want to send these your, your samples off to a lab um, that you can trust that is going to give you these results um, something else I should have done that I'm going to do next year is do a PFLA test on the compost and then that'll give you a, a good breakdown of what's in there as well um, and then I've done a B crop in the past um, these are all, all good tests to kind of give you an idea of what is in your bioreactors. The, the benefit of the B crop is, is it's straight DNA uh, test. And so you're going to get the DNA breakdowns of what is in there. Um, the problem is, with the DNA test is it will give you the types of bacteria and the types of fungus and the different species of each. But you may be 50-50 on both, like 400 species of fungus, 400 species of bacteria, but you don't know if you actually have way more bacteria, like, you know, they're even on the amount, but there's actually more bacteria than fungus, or you have more fungus than bacteria. Um, that's the only thing with the bee crop is you don't get the, the even breakdown. 
uh, that you do, say, with somebody like Zach, who's, who's giving uh, an actual look and making counts within the grid of how many, how much fungus there is to, to bacteria. The other thing too is, is, you know, a lot of times people want that active fungal hyphae in there. Uh, Dr. Johnson is looking for the spores because that shows you that's mature compost that's gone through the process and those spores are in there. And then you're going to put that spore, those spores through the extraction process. And then if you fertigate or if you do go in furrow, plant, use compost extract in furrow, or if you do a foliar, you're going to get that into your soil. Or even doing the seed treatment, you're getting those spores and you're getting the, the endophytes within your, your seed and getting it into the soil. The conclusion that I've come to with myself is, is that I'm going to continue to use, this year didn't go out the way I wanted it to. We got three that were corn stock based and then I ran out of corn stocks. So then uh, we ended up having spoiled silage in our feed truck. We did two with just the, the spoiled silage um, that had a little bit of beardless trip. And then we did one where we added more beardless trip to the silage, made one like that. And then we made two, which is straight beardless triticale. Hey, well, one had a little bit of wood chips and biochar in it, but I digress. The reason I did a whole bunch of them is just, just to see how the results on doing the variety would go. And then next year, I've really got to get locate some he, uh, leaves and get that added to our Biorec just to see how much of an impact leaves make because Dr. Johnson really likes the way the leaves turn out. Um, so yeah, it's something, this is something that it shows you that we want to be, everybody's running into this and doing this because it's so efficient, but we're, we're really, as far as farmers doing it, as far as I'm doing it, I've got a lot to learn and there's a, a lot of, of things that we can grow in um, and understanding what we want to be doing to be make, getting the best co possible compost to be adding the bacteria and the fungus to our soil that is going to best benefit our soil. Right now our soils are so starving for the biology and needs the biology so bad that we see a huge benefit but I think going down the road the more we're able to dial in what works best in these bioreactors, what's getting the best results is going to really improve the quality of soil that we're able to, or the, I don't know if I want to say quality of life or the amount of biology that's in our soils, but what I'm trying to say is, is the, the longer that we, the more we continue to do this and to continue to, to do research and study and test the more we're going to understand and the better we're going to be in agriculture and as farmers in producing the healthiest soil and the healthiest crops for the consumer. So please continue to go down this path with me where we're pursuing soil health and uh, doing the best that we can be to be the best possible farmers, um, which is better for everybody, the consumer and the producer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful. If you have thoughts on videos you want to see, leave it in the comments below. Um, appreciate you guys. Appreciate you watching this video. Jay Young out.